Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to PJ's Rust and Busted Garage. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at the transmission on the 56 Pontiac. Um, we did some research, talked with a gentleman that isn't too far from here, and uh, he gave me some ideas um, about what to look for that might be wrong. So we're going to drain the fluid and pull the side cover and the main pan just to see what we can see. Uh, hopefully it's nothing major, but I'll bring you guys along for it. Okay, guys, trying to get you back in here. I don't know. There we go. That's a little better, I think. Maybe. Move you a little bit. All right, so, whoop. Sorry, guys. Trying to do this. You guys that lay on your backs all the time working on these and don't have lifts, you, you know... Uh, I'm doing you never have enough room and there's always a jack stand or something in the way or something getting underneath your creeper wheel but really 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 hoping that there was something here that wasn't uh hooked up but the plunger that runs in here it's still connected. Everything is moving like it should. The only thing I noticed, I'm trying to do this without knocking the camera over, but I'm not for sure what this is 100%, what it does. It sounds like it's on a gear of some sort. It's got rollers on it. To me, that's something that when it's the engine started spins oh I'm going to try and turn the dry shaft and see if anything moves here watch in there oh yeah so it does uh, easier just to turn it or not All right, everyone. So this is what happened. Um, I actually thought I brought you guys underneath here with me for everything uh, that was going on and that I was doing. And well, see, I I got everything set up and was ready and get pulled the pan and was showing you guys and talking and well. Lo and behold, I got done. Whoop, that was the wrong way. Sorry about that. Come on. There we go. And my little light's beeping at me, flashing. I'm sure it's going to go out on me. But anyway, I had done all the recording and went through and looked at everything and checked a few things to make sure. It was doing what it was supposed to be doing, from what I could see. And, uh, oh, wrong area. Got my finger right up in there. I don't know. But there's plenty of, I don't know if you call it clutch material or where the bands are there. There's nothing wrong with it. I, uh. I did check a valve here to make sure it was working and the pin that goes up and in and it it was pushing fluid out from actuating it back and forth and uh but everything looks clean and and it does I mean it 
it completely looks rebuilt. I wasn't lied to from what I can see. Everything is freshened up and new bands and you guys can see there it's it's clean. I'm going to try to see if I can't get you You see that clutch of bands right there. I mean, they're they look good. I just don't see anything wrong. I'm thinking that something in here, I don't know if this is what you would call the valve body. I, I need to get my manual and do some more reading and looking. But I don't know if there's something in there that's just not actuating from it sitting. Everything else, though, I mean, it. it is clean. It's... They're just nothing obvious. The only thing I wonder about is this here because I don't know if that's supposed to come out whenever it's, you know, the centrifugal force of it and that pin comes out. But everything is hooked up. I mean, it could be, I did notice this has got yellow paint on it. I don't know if that's factory or if maybe this was what was wrong the last time and it's been replaced. This is a rebuild or a junkyard part or something. Usually when you see that, I mean, that's a replacement part uh, with that yellow, but then again, I mean, I could be wrong. I'm just thinking about, you know, around here locally and shoot. Usually that's a, a mark, but I don't know. Again, I just I don't see anything wrong. The tube's got some bent up. Oh, there went my light. Where's my other one? Oh. Oh. But anyway, the tube it's got some dings and stuff on it but it's nothing you know that I would be concerned about I don't see any holes it just looks like something was beaten that was probably pushing it back in you know to get it to go into the casing there I just I don't know the other thing I'm not for sure about is right here, whenever that actuates, it just, it don't move very much. And that could be something there that it's not turning enough to let fluid bypass into the forward gears. I, again, I'm, I'm not going to pretend like I know something about these because I don't. Uh... I don't know enough about them to spell my name and uh, apologize for the the nose being all stuffed up I run in my diesel heater and it's got kerosene in it but still it uh it'll stuff my nose up pretty quick but there's the pan It's just material from there where it broke on me. I got a gasket there. Well, no, I guess the gasket's all there. Huh. But there really isn't anything in here that I would be concerned about. That's just crud. That ain't really metal or anything. I mean, there is a little bit. Down here, some metal. 
but if it was rebuilt and as many you know the times that i've started it up and tried shifting gears i mean i guess that's to be expected there should be some stuff in there from the band material and clutches and whatever it's in there but anyway i was really really hoping it was just something simple you know like that selector uh pin had you know disconnected or something simple simple like that but unfortunately that's not the case um i'm going to get the stuff cleaned up and put my bolts and everything up for right now i'm gonna leave that open i'm gonna look at my book not that I'm going to understand a word it says. It's like trying to read Chinese standing on my head. And I can't read Chinese to begin with. So it isn't going to matter what I read. I can understand some stuff. and I. Uh, but as for adjusting it or knowing what I'm supposed to adjust, that's, yeah, that's, a, that's another whole story. But I'm going to get everything cleaned up. And then... Uh, I'm probably going to go underneath and go ahead and pull that brake master cylinder. I plan on uh, tomorrow going and getting the rebuild kit for it. So I want that off because regardless if I uh, figure out the transmission or not anytime soon, I still got to have brakes and that master cylinder froze up. So that'll be the next thing. But I'll get stuff cleaned up and then uh, I'll bring you back underneath whenever I go to uh, pull that master cylinder. Be back in just a little bit, guys. All right, everyone. Um, I got everything pretty well cleaned up. My tools put away and cleaned up. And I got some oil dry back here, but because I still got some leaks from the transmission, I don't. I didn't put the pan and stuff back on for right now. Um, I was looking around while I was underneath there last week. Bear with me. I'm gonna try and get under here and move around the best I can. Um, I had, uh, if you guys have watched my other videos, I told you I had a bunch of cold water leaks and, all right, let's, see. there we go. All right. I'm going to zoom you in, but I had a bunch of cold water leaks and I had wiped a couple of these off for a reason. Right there. You can see where some of it's coming from. So it's coming up above get in there there we go I'm trying to keep from rotating my phone around much and hold it still that freeze plug right there come on let me get back oh too far sorry guys I don't know if I can go anymore all right so Right up there is a freeze plug. And if you can see, a little indention, divots. But there's one that's green to the bottom right of that freeze plug. Well, that right there, my friends, is from someone installing the freeze plug with something pointy. And uh, I did, I wiped and cleaned this all off. I'm going to try and move my light and see if I can get you some more light up there. But um, there we go, maybe. Trying to stay out of the shot and give you guys some light. But anyway, yeah, that freeze plug is leaking. And it's all because someone used something pointy to... Uh, install it that's the reason why you you use a socket a wooden dowel that's relatively the right size um, you don't want to use screwdrivers or punches or chisels or anything like that to put those in and right there's the reason why that's a good way to blow up your engine lock it up um, so, yeah, everything got just a little bit tougher. Um, 
when I did some looking around to see about finding head gaskets to where I could just pull one head off and uh, replace it. But after looking through the manual that I have here, I was kind of reading through it, and like I told you, I, I understand some of it, and yes, I can kind of follow diagrams and see, but, um, and as was, I talked with, uh, uh, his name was Craig, last uh, Sunday, I believe, there isn't a lot you can do with adjustments or testing and stuff while the transmission is actually inside the vehicle it's easier to get it out on a bench and take stuff apart to do that work um, so the transmission is going to have to come out and it's easier I guess on these to uh, separate the transmission from the engine uh, pulling the engine and transmission all in one unit I did read in the my manual over here my service manual that uh there is a way to do it while it's in there and it don't sound too awfully complicated um i just got to be able to hold the engine up and the transmission at different points and you know there's all kinds of stuff that goes into it but anyway um whether i pull the engine and transmission all in one unit or i drop the transmission out of it with the engine still in the car um i'll be able to replace that freeze plug which i'm gonna have to uh, that's not a i don't want to hurt that engine so yeah another problem but again i'm glad i found it early and i didn't try driving it down the road and and uh blow the engine up and uh, yeah so but that's where we're at um i'm going to uh put my oil dry back let it collect the uh oil that's dripping there and uh i'll wind up going in and pulling that master cylinder out probably tomorrow um, i'm back off work again so i'll have a little time and i'll probably be going and picking up the uh master rebuild kit for the master cylinder and we'll do that over here on the bench but i'll bring you guys along what i'm doing and learning and whatever and show you the tools or whatever i'm using again again i am no professional um, i've actually youtubed it myself watched videos to see how it's done and uh what kind of tools i'll need and things like that so uh but anyway uh i'm gonna turn you guys around here so yep again <laughs> but i'm going to get off here and uh get cleaned up i think supper is going to be ready here soon and i need a shower i got a nice armpit full of uh transmission fluid earlier whenever i dropped that pan um but yeah sum it up today can't figure out anything out on the transmission really um, at least i can't uh, i didn't see anything wrong nothing's disconnected not working so more than likely there's a stuck valve or a check ball or well there probably isn't a check ball in these but there's something stuck in there that's not letting fluid transfer like it's supposed to um and i found a leaking yeah i'm tired i worked last night sorry about that people but um freeze plug was leaking yeah there it is uh and it was due to someone putting it in with something sharp pointy yeah, it's just not a good idea i don't know i don't know i i was taught different but i guess sometimes you do what you do in haste or hurry i don't know but anyway, we'll get off here and uh, I'm probably going to put all these videos together into one. So tomorrow it will be probably be mid-morning, afternoon. I'm not for sure yet. It just depends. And I'll uh, I'll get back with it and we'll, we'll 
tackle that master cylinder. So we'll catch you guys tomorrow.